Dubbo Regional Council Mayor Matthew Dickerson, how are you today? Good morning, Rod. Good to be chatting to you. And uh, how's Dubbo and surrounds looking? Lots of exciting things happening around Dubbo, of course, but we've also got, so got a little mark against our name at the moment with a boil water alert. So for your listeners, if they're coming to Dubbo, make sure that if they're going to drink some of the water, if they're going to put it in their mouth, they're going to clean their teeth with it. It sounds almost a bit embarrassing, Rod, but you've got to use either bottled water or boil the water that you're going to use. And this boil water alert was put on on the 7th of July, so a few days ago now, and we were producing water that was a higher turbidity, and I didn't think that would be a word I'd be throwing around as much as I have the last week, a higher turbidity than is in spec. So there's a turbidity measure, and 0.5 nephilometric turbidity units is the measure that we are given to say you need to produce water below 0.5. We were producing water slightly above spec, around 0.56, 0.57. It varied up and down a little bit around those sort of numbers. So we talked to New South Wales Health and put a boil water alert on. So for about 10 hours and 18 minutes, we produced water below spec. By 6.18 p.m. Thursday, the 7th of July, we were producing good quality water, and we've been producing good quality water. I'm talking about 0.05 to 0.07 NTUs. We've been producing that water for the last more than a week now. We've got 86 megalitres in our network. We only produced 7.8 megalitres below spec. We've now produced double our network size. So we've now produced more than 170 megalitres of water that's been in spec. But New South Wales Health are still saying we can't lift the boil water alert. So a bit of an argument going on there. We're still going back and forth with them because we believe we're at the point now that water is safe, that people could drink it, but we can't lift that boil water alert at the moment. So for anyone that travels down to Dubbo, just make sure you're aware of that. I know it's a big drain on the, the uh, not only the community, but also the people that uh, are selling bottled water. You heard ran out there for a while. We were pretty well served. We actually told the supermarkets on the day the boil water alert went on, on that Thursday, the 7th of July, we contacted the supermarkets and said it might be a good idea to order in some additional bottled water. They responded pretty quickly. It was a better situation than the toilet paper with COVID-19 situation because that problem was happening across the nation. At least with this one, it was happening in Dubbo only, so they could get extra bottled water from their surrounding supermarkets, for example. But most supermarkets have been pretty good. I've walked into most and they've had pallets of water at the front so people have been able to pick up those bottled water or that bottled water if they needed to but most people I've been speaking with have just been boiling their water it's a bit inconvenient it's a bit of a pain but at least you've got the water at least they're still able to turn their tap on and get water but again just to be safe boiling that water but it does have an impact you've got pubs for example they've got to produce ice something that people often forget about is the ice that they've got there Ice can still be infected with cryptosporidium, which is what we're worried about in this scenario. So anyone that has to produce ice, so for example, a pub needs to boil all that water before they put it into an ice maker or get bottled water and put it in. So that becomes very clumsy and expensive. But I even had a woman the other day who said that she needs to replace the water in her fish pond or where she, her fish tank where her fish are, and you can't just put normal water in there. I assume, and I don't know, I'm not an expert on crypto, but I assume that that could possibly impact the fish. So she would have to boil all that water before she fills up her fish tank. So it becomes fairly clumsy and inconvenient for lots of people. Again, health is the number one issue here. We don't want the community impacted by a disease or by crypto, which if you're immunocompetent, Rod, you could get sick, you could have diarrhea, you might have a cough, and it might last for a few days and be quite uncomfortable and unpleasant. But if you're immunocompromised, if you're frail, if you're elderly, that type of thing, then crypto can be very bad, in fact, can lead to death. So obviously, we need to make sure the health of our community is the number one priority. Yep, And it sounds like you're uh, right on top of it. And uh, as soon as uh, the boil boil water alert is allowed to be lifted, it'll happen. Absolutely right. We're, we're working with New South Wales Health. We're working with a few different government departments to get them all to agree about when we can lift that. And there's differences in opinion at this stage, but we'll get there in the end. All right. And uh, some uh, lovely open spaces around uh, Dubbo and the Dubbo regional area. 
and you're looking to maybe try and uh, use it in a different way? Yeah, it's something that I've actually had some discussions with some other councils around the state about. When I've been at some different conferences or some different meetings, some of the issues that have been raised have been around housing. That's something that we are seeing across the entire state, probably across the entire nation, where there's just not enough housing and trying to work out ways to bring on more land and get more houses built. And so various communities across the state have been talking about converting some open space that's not being used or even converting some crown land that's not being used and turning that into operational land, ultimately turning into the ability to put housing on there, some housing blocks. And so we've had a good look across our area, our Dubbo Regional Council area, and identified a few parcels of land that we may convert or attempt to convert into operational land. And the idea here is that land that's being used for, say, sporting fields, no, we're not going to convert that. Land that's open space that's just there and we've still got to maintain it but it's not really highly utilised and not really taken advantage of, we're actually talking about a few of those parcels that went through a council committee meeting last week to actually put those out on public display to get the community feedback about those parcels of land and then if the community is okay with that, we'll go forward for the formal application to try and convert those parcels over. We've got to get state government approval for some of those as well, but this is the first step. The committee meeting that recommended we do that last week will go to council in Thursday week time, so almost two weeks' time, to be finally resolved by council. But then again, that's step one of many steps. But it will be interesting to see what the community thinks about that. Obviously, it's not something that you do lightly, not something you rush into, because those open spaces, they're some of the reasons people love to live in a regional area. You don't want to be living in a concrete jungle. So getting the right mix of land that's open space, land that gives you that nice feeling of being in an open area, a nice regional area, as well as having enough land for housing. That's the mix we're trying to achieve. It's a beautiful city, Dubbo, and uh, Wellington's a great place as well. It's good to see you uh, trying to utilise uh, your assets uh, the best you possibly can, I reckon. Yeah, that's exactly right, and that's exactly what you're trying to do. Because some of these parcels of land, we look at the usage of them, and they're not highly utilised. We've still got to maintain them, so there's a cost to council to maintain them. And you think, well, if they're not really being utilised and we're still paying money to maintain them, would they be better off used for something else? But we've also got to look towards the future. It may not be utilised today, but in 10, 20, 30 years' time, would they be utilised? Do we want to build out those areas and then not have them utilised? So that'll be the sort of feedback we'll be asking for the community. Talk again in a couple of weeks' time on more of uh, what's happening around the Dubbo Regional Council. And hopefully, we'll have the boil water alert lifted by the next time we <laughs> chat, Rod. <laughs> Unless there's another downpour, I reckon you will. Yes, hopefully. Have a good day. Thanks, Rod.